Hey everybody, it's Ann Beebe. Today is Thursday, February 6th, 2020. I'm Barb Hammer and I am in my apartment, but I'm not living here. Um, so um, I want to tell you the story about my situation here uh, in British Columbia, Canada, near Vancouver, where I live. Um, so I'm looking outside the spare bedroom window that I was using. I was using this uh, bedroom as an office to produce my videos and it was also storage for um, art supplies for my husband's canvases and all that. Uh, anyway, so I'm looking out the window at um, a big tree. There used to be a lot more of these big trees until this development you see on the left came in a year or two ago. Anyway, so we used to have be next to this um, empty lot and there were a lot more trees. There were all these trees and that uh, more trees on this property and then more where the townhouses are located. So anyway, I'll just show you. So this is the development they put in townhouses. Very cheap. I mean cheaply constructed, not, not well constructed. And I think they're just being used as uh, for rental, for renting out. And um, so there's more trees there. And when they started to take down the trees in the spare, uh, in this uh, empty lot, um, I actually had a view in this direction of uh, Mount Baker, which is in uh, Washington State on the other side of the border. So we're right on the border with Washington State and Canada. Um, so it's just the usual cloudy, rainy, dark day here today. Um, the snow is mostly melted. We had some snow. Anyway, I'm going to show you the room and kind of tell you the story of what has happened here. So I'm sorry, <laughs> it's kind of sh hard to show you. So anyway, there was flood mid-August of last year, 2019. There was flooding on the floor above. And um, so supposedly a new tenant, he moved in and he decided to take a bath and he filled his tub and fell asleep, I think, in the tub with the tap running. So there was flooding and um, uh, so our, the walls in this room got wet, soaking wet, and uh, so uh, they, they hired, uh, contractors were hired to um, repair the damage. And so they came in and they dried everything out and they tested, um, they tested uh, everything. They have to test everything to see if there's anything um, bad they have to deal with. So they found asbestos and they supposedly found lead in the paint, maybe just in the bathroom, I'm not sure. So it took a long time to dry out everything and we didn't get the worst of it because we weren't right below the apartment where the flooding was. We were on the other side of the hallway. So anyway, I'm going to show you. It's kind of boring. <laughs> that. So I'm going to show you. So this is the kitchen. So there's no linoleum. So in the hallway here. Uh, so there's just bare floor. I guess it's concrete. I guess. I don't know. Um, so there's no linoleum. Um, so they had to remove... They had to remove the uh, stove. There's a little stove, apartment size stove here. And they had to remove um, the refrigerator that was here. And um, so this is the hallway actually in the apartment. Uh, that's the door to the storage room. We had to remove everything from the storage room because um, the floor, the linoleum that they had to remove was there too. Uh, I think, yeah, so we had to take everything up from the floor. We started to put things back in, um, that's another story. Uh, anyway, uh, complicated, so, I'm um, sorry. <laughs> so that's the entrance here, this is the entrance, and so no linoleum, no linoleum, and when we moved out uh, late November, had to remove everything from the bottom cabinets here. These are your old cabinets. Um, and because they were going to have to lift these uh, cabinets 
to install supposedly new linoleum, which never happened. So the sink has been reconnected. It, there's water there. You know, there's running water there. We started putting a few things back. We supposedly have to move back in on Monday, the 10th, February 10th. And supposedly the bathroom sink was going to be reconnected. That's where the bathroom sink was. Um, I've got a flashlight here because the lights, uh, there are no lights here. You can, we've got no lights here. Um, and that was the fixture for the lights over the vanity, the sink. Um, so no toilet, there's no toilet, so no linoleum, no toilet. Um, there's the toilet sitting in the bathtub and so none, none of that is hooked up. No water there. Um, what else here? So anyway, we've had to, it's very cluttered. The, the rest of the, it's just a mess. It's just a mess. It's cluttered. We had to move everything from the bathroom and the kitchen and into the bedroom and the living room. There's the, uh, the bathroom mirror on the floor of this. I'm back in the, the bedroom again. So, yeah. So they had to, um, remove the, whoops, I'm trying to get this flashlight going again. Here we go. Um, so they had to, I don't know if you can tell, yeah, they had to remove the drywall or whatever here, put in the drywall. And I was just informed the, the landlord walked in the middle of a video I was making here. I'll have to redo it. And he told me that um, they didn't even put any uh, insulation behind this drywall when they put the new drywall in. So that's another nightmare. I did not know that. I just found that out. Um, anyway... They had to remove, so they dried out, they dried out everything. They, um, and then when we moved out, then they started um, removing uh, the drywall, um, and they started the abatement, um, removing the asbestos, and there was lead in the paint. I don't know if that was just in the bathroom, I'm not sure. Um, Removed the linoleum. There's apparently asbestos. Oh, the asbestos was in the underneath the linoleum too. This how this building was uh, constructed. Firm building was constructed in 1980. So, I'm pretty sure they were not using asbestos anymore in the U.S. And that's so they were still doing this in Canada. I don't think they were still using asbestos in construction in the U.S. Then in 1980, because I was I remember they were already removing asbestos from places around that time in the U.S. Um, so there was, I don't know, there was asbestos underneath the linoleum, so they had to remove the linoleum to get to the asbestos. And uh, yeah, so this all started in August, believe it or not, drying out. And then uh, there was no work being done. So they, I don't remember. So, and they were supposed to, do the work within a week you know so they said oh you'll just be out of the apartment for a week so i was going off on a trip my husband had to go to the hotel and he thought he's going to be back here in a week uh-uh so there's been no work done here since december maybe mid-december before christmas and we kind of knew that they were going to take a break so there's a number of apartments they have to i think there were maybe 10 I don't know, 10 or so apartments affected and five were really badly damaged or something. I don't know. Um, so it was only supposed to take a week and they did some work, but it was dragging out. And then I think they were gouging the insurance company and the insurance company said, okay, we're not paying anymore. And apparently the contractor who's hired is actually a friend of the landlord and the landlord is a disaster and the apartment building manager, he's not happy with him either. And, but the building manager, he's stuck in the middle and he's, he told off the, uh, landlord, you know, that told him what an asshole his, uh, buddy was, who's the contractor. 
So we have to, we're supposedly, uh, we're not, they're not going to, the landlord isn't going to pay for the hotel room anymore. So we have to move out on the 10th unless we pay ourselves. We're, we're not doing that. But um, the apartment building manager said we could have access to a one bedroom apartment here. But um, I think we'd only use that maybe just to have access to a bathroom and kitchen maybe I don't know but um I don't know we're gonna be back here on Monday I guess but we're not happy I've complained to a number of um media uh, networks locally I haven't heard anything so the I contact like these consumer watchdogs but they get swamped there are lots of problems so this is Canada everybody thinks Canada is so great and it's not like the U.S. well there's bad stuff. It's neoliberalized. So, the, uh, you know, corporations and private business, they tend to one, run the shows here. So it's rigged here just as much in the U.S. And the elections are a mess here, too. Um, so it's neoliberalized. So, you know, business interests um, control things here. And we as tenants don't really have a lot of power. And this is the situation. So I think there are some consumer agencies maybe uh, in the province or in Canada I can contact, but I'm not confident anything will happen. There's lots of consumer problems here in Canada. Corporations, you know, corporations run the governments. They have the power. We don't. Um, that's the situation here. So I will redo that other video. It's gonna, um, it was on... Um, the coronavirus but it was um, about a different angle that people aren't really talking about much so anyway that's it for now thanks for listening and I will talk to you again soon bye